I don't know, will this work? Does that, does that make it less bright? Uh, uh, that's bright, that's bright. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just going to put it there anyway. Um, hey, everybody! <laughs> it, it's, it's weird. I look evil. <laughs> the lighting is low. Um, hey, welcome. It's old Roger D. from Channel Downstar with a... Um, the third, and possibly my final, right now, um, a crap load of pickups, part three, which is my, um, is it my appendix? <laughs> it's not my appendix, that's somewhere over here. Uh, my, my addition to my Defending My Collection uh, collection videos, um, where I go through what I bought in my Blu-ray collection, Throughout the past a year and a half, well, it's June, so yeah, a year and a half, um, uh, that I have not shown anybody. And the last two videos were, were uh, talking about those, uh, and I didn't want to keep going on the second one because I still have a lot to show. And um, I'm going to pull this out. I forgot about this one. Um, and I, I, I just... It's, it's, what is it? It's 8 o'clock at night, 8 p.m. here in uh, Rolling Meadows land. I was going to say Chicago land. Um, and uh, I, I was, I, I just watched something. My favorite science fiction film of all time I just watched. Not going to tell you what that is. At the end of this video, I'm going to do a little announcement on, on how I'm going to do my top ten favorite films of all time video and um, so yeah so so this is the third part and the thing is I had all these movies pulled out when I did my last one and they've been sitting here for a week two weeks and it's like I'm tired of looking at them I want to put them back up on the shelf so let me do this video I don't know when this is going to go up it might go up today or tomorrow. What is it? It's the 12th. Or it might go up uh, in July. I, 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 I just pass it by. I don't know. We got our tasty beverage. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, smoke coming out of the ears on that one. You see the smoke? Well, I should have a, a smoke effect. I don't know how to do that. I'm just I just do these videos. Anyway, like I said, I it's eight o'clock. It's dark, so I can't open the the shutters. I can't open the blinds to get a nice sunlight thing in here. So I have my lamp on, uh, uh, lamp upon your feet. And um, I was trying to th put something under it so it wasn't so bright reflecting. And I grabbed my script. Uh, this is a uh, <laughs> shameless plug. This is one of my first serious uh, scripts that I wrote. Living for the moment. When did I do this? Is there a copyright on this? I don't even have a copyright. But I, I did this in the 80s. Wrote this entire script. Eh, that don't look much. There we go. Uh, of of me growing up, of my life, and 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 it's it. Why am I talking about this? You people don't care about this. And I got a little alien. Rah, 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 rah. Uh, anyway, um, let's put him up here by the alien egg. Oh look, I got an alien egg. This thing I got at a convention. I'm just showing it off. Look at that. That's kind of cool. It's like a little. You can see through egg with a face hugger in there waiting to pounce on somebody. And it has this cool base. It's heavy as hell. I think this is resin. And then it's it's like, why am I showing this to you? <laughs> I got R2 back there. I mine a speaker. Okay. Um, we're going to go through uh, what I have left of my crap load of pickups from the last year and a half. And since they've been here, and since I've been able to actually like picking and choosing and watching stuff the last week or two, there's the order is screwed up because the last two were in the order of purchases, 
and I don't give a care now. I'm just going to show you what I have, and we'll go from there. Uh, first one. All right, here we go. Finally, the audience says, they go, finally, he's getting to the movies. I don't want to hear any of his crappy script and toy stuff. Um, this movie I was surprised with. I, I heard some bad things about it. I heard it was, it's, it's directed by Steven Spielberg, and I, I love Spielberg's early stuff. My gosh, up until probably... Let's see, Always. What came after Always? Jurassic Park, I think, uh, is probably my last favorite Spielberg movie. I didn't like his serious takes on, you know, Amistad and uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the Olympians in the plane, Munich. And I, I, I don't know. Some of his last stuff I just didn't care for. Even the the Caprio with Hanks trying to find him, the the con guy, it was all right. They're all okay, but nothing is like Jaws, Close Encounters, E.T., uh, even Always, which I love. Always, um, Jurassic Park, great stuff. And I heard this. I heard he was doing this, and I saw the trailer, and I was like, wow, that's really kind of cool. And I also saw it was going to be on 3D, and I was like, oh, come on, 3D, be on Blu-ray. And it wasn't, except in the UK, of course. You import it. You people who, who you people should get an all-region player. If you don't have an all-region player, everybody should get an all-region player. Is my lamp melting my camera? No. I thought I saw some smoke. <laughs> <laughs> from the, the viewfinder. Um, anyway, so I watched this the other day because I had it for a while and I haven't watched it in a while. Uh, I've been actually watching a lot more 3D movies trying to catch up with the ones that I have bought that I have not seen yet. And I remember reading reviews and they were saying, well, this is okay. It's, it's all right. But old Roger D. Channel Downstar, he loves his 3D, he's going to buy everything 3D, whether it's good or not, just so he has it there, so when they get rid of 3D, he'll have this 500 movie collection of 3D films. Anyway, what am I talking about? If you haven't predicted already, it's the BFG, the big fucking gun. No, it's the big friendly giant. Um... You know, and I actually liked it. It's not as good as the old Spielberg film, but this was pretty touching. This was, this this was a fable. This this was a really kind of fun little fable with amazing special effects. I thought the 3D really made this more entertaining than I think I would feel if I just saw it in 2D. Uh, here's the back. Uh, you want to steal it to see all the extras, even though it's blurry. It comes with the slip case. It's got the, the the UK fat case. And it comes with the 3D. It comes with the DVD. Um, and I actually kind of like this movie. Uh, it was it was sweet. It really was just, just you know, it... Uh, it's Roll Dahl, man. It's Roll Dahl, I, if I'm saying that right. I I never knew of him until Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I believe that. No, that's that's not Roll Dahl. Is it Roll Dahl? I know that's uh, the Bond, Cubby Broccoli, right? Um, but uh, Roll Dahl, Tales from the Unexpected. I used to watch that show in the 80s. It was an anthology. It was like a Twilight Zone type thing. And I used to love his little stuff. And... He wrote this. Uh, this is one of his, you know, like Gilbert and the and the grape. Gilbert, not Gilbert grape. Uh, uh, the one with the orange and and the. <laughs> what am I trying to think of the movie with the giant? And the, it was animated like Nightmare Before Christmas. And, uh, it's not what's eating Gilbert grape. It's. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, so that's all that matters. Anyway, the big fucking gun. I mean, the big friendly giant. I really, really playing Doom too much. Um, really enjoyed it. I thought the 3D was really kind of cool in that thing. 
Um, it, like I said, it helped enhance the viewing of the movie and really enveloped me and got me into it. I love the scenes where he's in the city uh, or the town uh, where he's between the buildings and he's hiding himself as a as a as a Christmas tree or as a lamppost or something like that. That was that was really kind of cool. And all the little other little well big giants bigger than the BFG um, were good. And the girl is so sweet. She was so sweet in that movie. Anyway, um, this. <laughs> people hate this movie people hate all these movies and this is the fourth one people hate these movies and I think it's because they just don't get them they just cannot put their brain in the jar by the door and have a bowl of popcorn and just watch it and just let it happen and, and laugh at the dumbness at the bad effectness at 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 the bad actingness at 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 all the amazing cameos they decide to throw in there and the parodies and I'm talking about Sharknado 4 The Fourth Awakens um man I love these movies I don't know why I don't know why they're stupid they're really dumb and stupid this is the exclusive collector's edition with Never be, be, never be, be, never be foreseen. Viva, shark, viva, 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 shark, NATO version. Um, it's not cheap, Oico either. It's a full case. Uh, these, I, I, I laugh at these. I, I, three minutes in, I'm laughing my ass off because I'm seeing how shoddy the the camera work is and the acting is and and sometimes the special effects start off just like that and it's so bad and it's so campy and it and this one has uh gilbert godfrey which i absolutely adore <laughs> people think he's obnoxious a lot of people feel he's obnoxious and i think he's hilarious in this anyway uh sharknado the fourth awakens little Star Wars parody on there. That was pretty funny. He's even, she's even got like a fake hand with a lightsaber. It's, it's, people are going, what? Yeah, it's, it's just ridiculous. It's, it's, you know how Mel Brooks, <laughs> I'm going to go on. I'm going to go on. I was, I'm not comparing him to Mel Brooks. No, no, no. Mel Brooks is like here. Sharknado's down way over here. But uh, there, there's, there's like a button that hits me when I see a certain type of humor that I just lose it. Um, these, I have just about every one of them on DVD. Um, and then Universal brought out this beautiful set of the Blu-rays of the first movie of each one of these classic series. And uh, they were remastered and they're beautiful to look at. And... Um, uh, they they recently got the idea, probably because that that major big set sold so well. The I got the I they they got the idea to do what they did with the DVDs, which was center on one care, excuse me, center on one character of the series and show and, and include every one of the movies of that series. And uh, if you're clever, you know what I'm talking about. Universal, and um, and they decided to bring them out on DV on, on Blu-ray, and I think they remastered a, a few of the sequels. I, I mean, they're I'll tell you this: they look so much better than the DVDs. And I'm talking about the complete Legacy Collection. One of them I have is the Mummy, the old classic Boris Karloff, uh, Lon Chaney Jr. Creature Feature, uh, Monster Vision, whatever you want to... Uh, everybody had something different in the States. Uh, late night uh, monster movie show. And uh, this is the Blu-ray Legacy Collection that comes with The Mummy, The Mummy's Hand, The Mummy's Tomb, The Mummy's Ghost, The Mummy's Curse, and Abbott and Costello Meet the Mummy. And 
they came out originally pretty high in price and I waited and they finally came down and I jumped on them and it's cool it comes in a nice little case here we go here's the back if you want to kind of look at it and all the movies are in there really kind of nice they look great um, if you're a horror fan or a monster movie fan, as I am, of the golden age, uh, if this is if Universal is the golden age of monsters, what's the silent film? What what is what is like Hunchback and Phantom of the Opera? That's not golden. What would that be? Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so yeah, they came out with all of them, and uh, uh, not all of them, because I'm waiting for the creature movies, and they. God, they better, they remastered the original one in 3D. They better do Revenge of the Creature in 3D because that is meant to be seen in 3D. And I really am hoping when they release the legacy set of the Creature from the Black Lagoon movies that the Revenge of the Creature, the second one, will be in 3D. So, got that one too. Um, this I just recently watched um, and, and did a... Um, Effed up Friday Night Films. Um, I'm so bright from below um, uh, of this movie. And I, I've always, I had this on Laserdisc and I watched it a lot, a lot. And it wasn't for that reason. It was just because it was so weird and twisted and beautiful to look at because it was colorful. And Kathleen Turner was so beautiful to look at. And Anthony Perkins was just nuts talking about Arrow's release of Crimes of Passion. Um, I just recently, like I said, did a video on this for, uh, look at these extras. Look at these freaking extras on here. And I'm not going to list them all. You can go online and look at them. But it comes in a nice little tight. Tight. Hold it tight. Tight. Planet of the Apes reference. Um, here we go. The original poster art. It comes with a beautiful booklet, and I believe a poster, right? Oh no, it's just a, a, a one of those cards, those arrow cards of 2000 Maniacs. Um, but it comes with the Blu-ray, the DVD, crap load of extras. Um, guilty pleasure, man. Guil I, I, I don't know what this is all about, but boy, I love watching it. Uh, it's There's a lot of obnoxiousness in it, and there's a lot of titillation in it, and there's a lot of cool, badass stuff in this. But, yeah, not a movie for your grandmother to see. No, 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 no. Um, this, gosh... Never watched this first run. Never did. I was busy watching another show on Fox that had a laugh track and was shot in front of a live audience. And I really got hooked on that show, and I adore that show. I love that show. I'll tell you what it is in a second. But this show was playing on another channel, and it got so low reviews that I don't even think they completed a whole first season. They, they kind of got uh, canceled, like the Planet of the Apes TV series. I'm an ape head recently. I'm sorry I'm bringing up apes a lot. Um, tight. Hold it tight, tight, tight. Um, but... Um, it was, it was like years later, and then someone said, you really should watch this show. And I was like, okay, I will. A lot of stars blossomed from the show and went on to do really big stuff. And um, so, so I picked up the DVD set, which was a really cool DVD set. It had some nice extras, had commentaries, had a ton load of extras. And then, of course, they say, Blu-ray coming out, and it was in the hundreds. And I was like... 
No, 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 no. And then it came down in price. No, for 14 episodes, I'm not paying 100 bucks for a box set of 14 episodes of a television show. Are you kidding? Then it came way down, and I picked it up. What am I talking about? I'm talking about freaks and geeks. Look at this frickin' mega set, man. Is that right? No. Of course it's never right, because it's Roger. Uh... There's the back. I can just show you real quick. If you want to see more, go to Amazon. Comes with season one. And no, no, it only comes with one season. Like I said, 14 episodes. But what they did was because it was broadcast in four by three, the original aspect ratio, because there were no 16 by by 12. Ugh, blank freaking drug head. Uh, 16 by 9. There were, there were no sets back then like that. But they shot it on film as opposed to That 70s Show, which was the other show I was talking about. They actually went back and remastered it and widened the frame of the actual film that they were filming it on. And so you get a full, you get more on the sides. Kind of like what they did with, um, what did they do that with? Uh, Galactica? I, no, Galactica, they... Well, was it Galactica that they opened the frame up? No, it wasn't because the special effects weren't done for the full frame. What, what's the show I'm thinking of? I know they did that for the monkeys. Uh, what's the other television show where they widen it? The Wire, I believe? Um, anyway, so you got the, the widescreen, the new widescreen remaster, and you got all the episodes as the original aspect ratio. And you also have this wonderful this wonderful separate disc just of the extras and you also get this nice cool yearbook booklet booklet and let me show you real quick just kind of how they look on the inside uh, wait are they stacked no it's just stuck there we go. There we go. The other one's exactly the same. It's just one is widescreen, full frame. One is uh, the original aspect ratio, 4 by 3 when we all had box televisions. There's another show that... Oh, that 70s show. That 70s show opened up the mat, and you got to see the whole thing. Um, this... Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mentioned this in an earlier video that I I heard so much of this show that I hated it uh, without even watching it. And then one day I was like, I had nothing to do. And I was like, let me put the first episode in. And then that was good. And I was like, oh, let me watch the second. And I was hooked. By, by the third episode, I was totally hooked. And somebody had gifted me the first two seasons because this was before I even watched the show. I was gifted in a mega box with a whole bunch of other movies. I won't even talk anymore about that. If you know me, you know the story. Um, but these two, the first two seasons were gifted to me as a steel book, beautiful steel book. And I, 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 they had recently, well, the third and fourth season came out, and then they recently released the fifth and sixth season, and highly anticipated seventh final season is coming up. I'm talking about Game of Thrones. I got the steel book with the crests in each one. This is the complete third season. I'm not taking it out of this. Uh, if you want to see more, go online. You'll see the steel book. You'll see how this. Each, each season has a crest from each one of the, uh, the, the regions that are battling. Great, great show. Uh, great steelbook set. I love that set. Um, this was also gifted to me by a good friend, and I'm going to say who it is. It's, hey, Internet, Eric here. I believe I did a, I did, I believe, I do, I do believe, I do believe in ghosts. Uh, that I uh, did a special unboxing of this, and no, no, it was of the comic which I have down here. I have it sitting here. Did I? Yeah. Oh, where's he going? Where's he going? El Superbisto. I was gifted this. 
after I heard so much good stuff about Rod Zombie's El Superbisto, the full title, The Haunted World of El Superbisto, watched this movie as soon as I got it, fell in love with it, cheapo, cheapo eco. If you haven't seen this and you're a fan of Rod Zombie, Rob Zombie, it's no Halloween, it's no Thousand Corpses, it's, it's him doing wacky-ass cartoon craziness, and I love every moment of it. My buddy Eric gave me a, 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 uh, the, 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 uh, that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I, I enjoy it. Uh, may I have another? <laughs> another comic? Oh, uh, El Super Bisto, man. Funniest thing since, gosh, the animation is like Ren and Stimpy. It's it's so rubbery. I love it. good animation like that. And you got zombie Nazis, and you got lots of titillation, I'll say. And uh, <laughs> this is so crazy and bad and politically incorrect. All right, um, half hour already. Crap, I gotta get moving. This is, I'm going to probably say, my favorite movie of 2015, 2016, 2016, and it may just be my favorite horror movie of 2016, The Girl with All the Gifts. If you have not seen this, what the F are you doing? And especially if you're a horror fan, see this freaking movie. Uh, I'll just, I, I, I went into a blind. I didn't know it was a zombie film. Spoilers. I went into it totally blind. Did not know what this movie was about. Heard about it. Heard it was great. Critically acclaimed horror film. Accessed the video through certain means. Watched it and, my God, this movie blew me away. The acting blew me away. Not to mention Glenn Close is in this. She, the lead actress, is freaking phenomenal. Um, 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 Senya Nan... Oh, I'm terrible with accent names. S-E-N-N-I-A, last name N-A-N... N-A-N-U-A. Beautiful. Um, Slipcover, nothing much. There's the back. Bloody, gory, uh, DVD, Blu-ray, uh, chilling, uh, over the steps over the line on um, some really violent scenes involving children, um, and man, what a what an ending! It, it, uh, it's. It's one of those movies that I always seem to say to people that don't watch the trailer, don't know anything about this movie, just rent the movie, stream the movie, whatever, grab some snacks, beverage, whatever, and watch it from beginning to end. I think you'll really be amazed. I love this frickin' movie. It's it's frickin' amazing. Frickin'. Did I say frickin' enough? Frickin'. Um, if you know me, I'm an old fart. Yeah. <laughs> When I was a kid, I watched lots and lots of bad B-movies that I fell in love with. There is an endless list. I just ordered a DVD, an eight-movie DVD set of certain B-movies that are not in my DVD collection that will never, although there are quite a few that I'm surprised have come on Blu-ray, this was one of them. Out of left field, never knew this would ever come out. And this was one of my favorite uh, B-monster movie movies from the 50s uh, that I watched as a little kid. And this is from the Warner Brothers Archive Collection. From Hell It Came. Tabunga! Tabunga! Uh, real fast, it's, it's like... Uh, um, um, it's like it's like natives on an island, and uh, one of the natives does something wrong, and is accused 
uh, not rightfully, and they take a tree stump, a hollowed out tree stump, they bury him, and he comes back to get his comeuppance as a tree monster called Tabunga. And it's like this bizarre tree monster with this face it's it's horrifying. It's truly horrifying, especially when you're like a six, seven year old kid. Did I even show that? Did I just show you the black the blank? There you go. But look at that face. As a kid watching this, you were horrified. And it's a B movie. It's a B movie. So you might end up just laughing through it. Um I had a copy of this. I sold it to somebody. And then all of a sudden they announced that they were going to do a remastered director's cut of it. And it's always been a guilty pleasure of mine. And when I got this version, the director's cut, I rewatched it. And everything just came flooding back from my youth when I saw this at the theater. And it, it was a different time, way different time than it is now. And uh, it's often laughed about. But man, it's got a great story, it's got some great acting, it's got some fantastic music and fantastic dancing. I'm talking about Saturday Night Fever, the director's cut, slip cover. Um, cheapo Eco, boring disc. You can rebuy the soundtrack, they remastered and brought the soundtrack out again. Say what you will, I I really, really love Saturday Night Fever, and I also really, really love Urban Cowboy. And I don't know why, other than possible music rights, that has not been released on Blu-ray yet. Waiting, waiting for it to come out. Uh, this I just waited because I wanted the price to come down, and at the time it did come out, I was kind of on finances. And then when it came real down in price, and I really didn't care about slip, co slip covers or anything like that, I just picked it up, and I watched it, and I enjoyed it. I liked it a hell of a lot better than the last one, and that's Star Trek Beyond in 3D. Yeah, no slip cover, just basic armory case. Let me get that thing out of there. Boring discs. Um, but... I enjoyed Star Trek. I, I beyond. I I enjoyed this one. This was good. It was almost like it's it. They're finally established with who they are. Now they can go off on these missions. You know, concentrate on the storyline of another mission, uh, and don't do con. Jeez. Here's another uh, B movie movie that I saw as a kid, and. Surprisingly, it was remade in 1979 as a little movie called Alien by Ridley Scott. Yeah, that's a remake. Did you know that was a remake? It's a remake of It, the Terror from Beyond Space. Um, basically, astronauts land on a planet because they get a distress signal. Uh, something climbs on board, gets on board, they take off to head back home to Earth, and one by one, crew members are being murdered by some alien creature. Um, yes, it's not alien, it's not as classy and good as alien. This was done in the 1950s, and um, it's just a whole lot of fun if you love old black and white 50s movies. Um, there you go, nothing special on the inside. But really, it influenced Alien. Um, what can you say? Twilight Time had a sale. Was it last year? It might have been the end of last year. They had a sale, and Twilight Time is usually like 30 bucks a movie. And they don't throw a lot of extras on their discs. But every once in a while, they'll put an isolated music score or they'll have a trailer, or they'll have some sort of little documentary on there. Nothing majorly special, and they're always very expensive. And I've been, I have been—I wanted this movie. I really enjoyed this movie. It's another one for my youth. Not real young youth, but like in my 20s and 30s that I used to see on television that I really, really liked. It was, like, it was, it was a great drama action film. 
survival film, as it will, as it were. And Twilight Time had a sale, and this came down to 14 bucks. And it was like, how can I not pick it up for 14 bucks? It's going for 30. I'm talking about Zulu, Zulu, Michael Caine. If you haven't seen Zulu, the original great, this this is pretty damn freaking fantastic movie, Zulu. Uh, there's the back. Uh, the British against a horde of Zulu soldiers. And you can see here that it had that little booklet in there, which is really kind of nice to have with all kind of secrets and movie tidbits. Zulu. It might still be on sale if you look for it. A uh, 3D movie that I heard by watching Blu by reading Blu-ray.com's forum. Uh, I always check out the, the Blu-ray.com forum because there are 3D movies that come out in other countries that are really good and have great pop-out 3D and or and or just really great depth 3D. And being a 3D fan, I had to look for it and found it. And I believe this is a German release. I think when I watched this, it had it was all like basically German, but it had the the original Cantonese, uh, a, a, a Japanese no, not Japanese as in Cantonese, Chinese. Um, a uh, uh, dialogue with the English subtitles, and I'm talking about, uh, it's kind of a cross between National Treasure and The Mummy, uh, the, the Brandon Fraser Mummy, well, maybe, I, don't, I haven't seen the new one, so I don't know, but anyway, it's called Mojin, the, the Lost of Legend, and it's a steel book, look at that, it's a steel book. It's really cool. It's a great little adventure movie going through different caves, looking for treasures. The 3D is great. There's, there's things like spears and rocks and rubble and things that come flying out of the screen. It's really, really nice. Let me open this up here. It's a two-disc set, DVD, Blu-ray 3D, I believe. And here's a little ad for Hardcore, which I still have yet to pick up. Oh, it's, a, it's for everything. There's a little back. This is one of those um, steel books that have artwork on the back, which you really don't see much. Oh, I took the discs out, but there's nothing back there. So it's just on this side. Um, I had fun with this. This was a fun little adventure film. Like I said, it, it's, um, it's, it's not a great movie. But it's really entertaining, and the 3D is, is pretty damn uh, entertaining and, and helps the movie along. If you don't mind reading subtitles, um, like I said, it's, it's, and it's cool that it's embossed. It, stick, it pops out there. Um, I don't know if you can kind of see that. But uh, it's, it's a nice little presentation of, of this adventure film. Um, I think that's right, right? Yeah. Um, but I enjoyed it. I, I really enjoyed watching it. It was it was a fun time. Now it's all dented. <laughs> uh, like I said, these are all mixed up. So I, I picked this up. I did an unboxing of this uh, yesterday, the, the other day. And um, I, I was floored by what I got because I, for some reason, I just bought it instantly. I never really looked and reviewed it. I didn't see what all came with it. I'm talking about Tales of Halloween, the big old Digibook special edition set uh, that came out that has all the, uh, you know, all the discs and the cards and all that stuff. I showed it in the last video. Just look for my box unboxing of uh, Tales of Halloween. I watched it last night as I'm recording this. I watched it again last night and it is good. This, this I really love. There's so many, there's ten stories. I didn't crack into the extras yet where there's like five or six extra stories. But man, some of those stories are really, really good. Uh, some are okay. Some just kind of go, all right, all right. But some of them are great. And it comes with a soundtrack. 
and it's it is limited to only a thousand pieces so if you want this baby look for it now get it now before it gets sold out but man the soundtrack is really really good I I, I was surprised that it came with it but when I was watching it again I was taking note of the music and I was like wow that's really good music um, where is my uh, slipcase of this? Uh, I know there's a slipcase to this. Here we go. Here we go. I don't want to show it without the slipcase. I've been getting nostalgia lately with Hammer films and old uh, monster movies, B movies, things like that. And uh, I was I'm very sad that I missed out on the first volume of this set, which I didn't know was a set coming out every so often. Collection, not set. And uh, this is the collection number two that came out, and it, again, they were so super high, which is why I never picked up the collection one, and I never saw it on sale to pick up collection one. But collection two came way down in price, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to buy it now, because you get... You get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven movies. I'm talking about the Vincent Price collection, um, which is which is beautiful. Um, you get um, the Raven, Comedy of Terrors, The Tomb of Lygia, Last Man on Earth, Doctor Fibes Rises Again, The Return of the Fly, and uh, House on Haunted Hill uh, has a nice little tight sleeve. And it comes with a nice disc, and all the movies are pretty much, you know, on here. There's a couple, there, there's like two movies on each disc, except for House on Haunted Hill, which has its own. Are there more? There must be more. Um, also comes with a cool booklet, which I can never do. Um... And I, I, I've looked and trying to get the first one because it has like Mask of the Red Death, Death and some other really good movies in there. I already have the Fibes set, so I didn't care too much about the Dr. Fibes movies. But those Corman films, it, it's like, will they ever come out separately on Blu-ray? And those are so colorful, so beautiful, those Roger Corman movies of the 60s. Um, so I why this is tight because I cannot get it tight tight hold it tight tight hold it tight <laughs> the Planet of the Apes TV show all right what else do we got here uh, oh this this I saw wow a few years ago and it's pretty damn amazing foreign film I think this might have been my favorite foreign film of that year. And when I got it, I rewatched it because it was a number of years, and it still holds up, and it's still fantastic. I believe there are um, one, two, three, four, five different, six different stories. It's Spanish. I believe this is a Spanish film or a Mexican film. Uh, Wild Tales. Um, if you've never seen this and you can tolerate reading subtitles which you should. Learn to read. Come on. You're missing so much if you don't watch movies with subtitles, foreign films. This thing is hilarious. It's, this thing is fantastic. This is all about irony and, and uh, what hell can happen to you if you don't step safely. Uh, if that makes any sense. There's the back. Um... It's a not-so-cheapo-eco case, but, um, I, again, it's one of those movies I can't tell you anything about other than there's six different stories, and they're all great. They're all great. Um, oh, speaking of great, this is one of those movies that I never thought would ever be put on Blu-ray um, because it's, it was just so odd. Um, because it was just so different. And I don't know why, because it's Terry Zweigoff, and, and uh, he does some really classy stuff. Uh, but I, I remember having this on DVD and watching it 
when I first got it, I watched it maybe once a week for a long time. I just loved the mood of it. I loved the little story. I loved the characters. The char it, it's, it's more of a character-driven movie. You watch it for the characterizations and, and the development, and there's this subliminal stuff going on through it. And Criterion got a hold of it and released it. And I'm talking about Ghost World with Thora Birch and Scarlett Johansson, a very young Scarlett Johansson, um, doing a fantastic job. Um, I don't know if this is her first movie. Oh, and Steve Buscemi. Can't forget about Steve Buscemi. But um, Criterion just released this. Look at this. It comes with a comic, and it comes with a big booklet, real big, thick booklet, and a pseudo-comic it's based on a comic. There's the disc. Um, this and there's another Steve Buscemi directed film that he wrote and directed called Trees Lounge. What I would I would love to have Criterion remaster and put that out with a ton of extras because I really love Trees Lounge. It was a weird time. It was this and Trees Lounge back and forth because both have Steve Buscemi in it and I was really starting starting to appreciate him as an actor and as a talent without being this goofy guy with goofy teeth and, and he's always a character in a movie. Uh, really serious stuff. Great movie, Ghost World, if you've never seen Ghost World. I've yet to watch this, sadly. Um, and I might just keep this out instead of putting it on the shelf. The shelves! Um, because I haven't seen it. And it might be timely because of Tom Cruise's movie, The Mummy. Uh, I bought this just because it's in 3D, and it was only like 9 bucks. And from what I read on the Blu-ray forums, the 3D forums, it's gory as hell. So I figured, okay, gory 3D horror movie, I'm going to pick it up. And it's only 10 bucks. American Mummy. American Mummy. I hear the acting is atrocious. But I hear it's very entertaining. There's tons of pop-outs. Uh, and and the 3D is really good, so I have it. I have yet to watch it, so we shall see what we shall see when we shall see it. It's a clear, not blue, not so cheap o eco, so maybe I will watch that very shortly. This is an old one. People go, you you're just talking about this now? Yeah, yeah. I waited. I didn't have the money. At the time that the big, everybody running to get the steel book and blah, 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 blah. And I saw it come down to maybe like seventeen ninety nine something like that. And I wanted it in my collection because I have all the others. I'm a little disappointed I didn't get the steel book, but I'm not that disappointed. Because I that stuff, I want the movie. I don't care if it's steel book. I don't care if it's a slip cover. I just want the movie. Uh... Marvel's Civil War, Captain America's Civil War. I did get it with the slipcover, though. Um, but yeah, everybody has this. Everybody loves this. Um, it is what it is. Not much to say about it. I enjoyed it thoroughly. It's my favorite Captain America movie. It really is. Um, maybe because of that airport scene, because that thing is pretty phenomenal. Uh, the 3D is, you know, depth, adequate, you know, nothing to cry home about. And we talked about this at the very beginning of the video, and we just got to the, what, I said that was the third season? That was, yeah, that was the third season. Uh, wait a minute, wait a moment, one, two, three. Oh, well, let me might as well dig this out. Put this in order. Here's the fourth season of Game of Thrones. Steelbook, with the cool crest, the magnetic crest. Not opening it up. Season four. Season five. Finally came down to about 40 bucks, which... And Dennis, you got a hell of a deal with that last one. Was it four? Man, Dennis from the blue corner. Go sub to him. Go watch him. Um, 
he got a hell of a deal on one of these. I don't know if it was uh, four or five or six. But I'm yet to pick up six. Got to pick up six. But it's still up in the $70 range. And I'm not paying $70 for ten episodes. Um, oh, I did a um, Forgotten Gems video on this movie. Uh, it, seriously, if you have not seen this movie, look for it, find it, get it. It might still be on sale from Twilight Time. This was the other movie I got from Twilight Time. The first one was um, that other one. <laughs> came down. And the other one is Emperor of the North with Lee Marvin. You're a big Lee Marvin fan, aren't you? And Ernest Borgnine, the great Ernest Borgnine. Um, actually, it does go like that. Uh, where does it go? Great movie. Great movie about uh, the homeless. Not the homeless, but the hobos of the 30s. Hopping trains. And Ernest Borgnine is a conductor who carries around a big-ass hammer and bashes hobos in the head, knocks them off their train, and Lee Marvin is like makes it his mission to ride this train and defeat Ernest Borgnine's character. It's it's brilliant. It's an amazing, amazing movie. And it's forgotten. You never hear anybody talk about it. Anybody. Which is why I created my little video series called Forgotten Gems. Check out all those movies that I do. I only did two so far. But there's more coming. There's lots more coming. Everybody, I think, has this horror movie, Train to Busan. Um... Picked it up, again, when the price came down. There was no rush to run out and got it, get it. Get it? Got it? Good. Um, great. Not much to say about it. it. It's a great zombie flick. It really, really is. This I had pre-ordered. I paid full price for this because I pre-ordered it. I had it on Laserdisc. I love this movie. This is one of my favorite crime movies um, of all time. And it's basically kind of known for El Pacino and Robert De Niro coming together and actually doing a movie together. Heat. Michael Mann? Michael Mann's Heat. This is the director's cut that came out, that special edition, recently. Um, hide that. Two-disc set. Uh, hide the digital code. Code. But, um, and it's funny, I got this weeks and weeks ago. Whenever it came out, the release date, I've yet to watch it. i got to watch it. I might watch this Thursday, because I'm off Thursday, and I'll have a nice afternoon to sit down and watch the damn thing. Speaking of old movies, uh, Hammer. Uh, I, I, I love the Hammer films, and I've been trying to collect them as they've been released on Blu-ray. And... Um, this this was one of those like horror of Dracula that that I absolutely adored growing up as a kid seeing it on the Late Show or on the Afternoon Monster Show or whatever, and it's the original Peter Cushing Christopher Lee ha Lee Hammer film Curse of Frankenstein, the first uh, Frankenstein film that they did uh, together. Look at those extras. Look at all that crap on there. Um, it's a three disc set. One, two, three. I had to import it from the UK because the US have yet to release it. Sadly, disappointedly, they never cleaned it up. They never remastered it. It's fuzzy as hell. It looks, almost looks worse than DVD. It really, really is sad. Um, but I got it. It's in my collection, and I'm hoping when they release it eventually in the U.S., they'll tinker with it and try to clean it up. Um, these go together. These are very recent from Shout Factory. Uh, Scream. Shout Scream. Same company. Um, when I was a kid, like I said, in all my videos, I went to the show a lot. My parents just said, go, go to the show, get out of our hair. So I was like 10, 11. I'd walk a mile or two to go to the show, the market, or the colony. 
and I saw all these great horror movies. Um, gory, gory ones like the Herschel Gordon Lewis films or, or classic foreign films like The House That Screamed or The Legend of Hell House or Willard, Willard, The Rat Man's Notebook, which I actually read the book while I was in school um, because I heard it was a horror book about a guy who controlled rats and he got revenge. And then the movie came out and I didn't know about it until I saw it. I was like, this is just like the book I read. So yeah, they, they released Willard. Finally, it never had a DVD release. Only had a um, VHS release from way back when. Here's behind the discs, the artwork. Um, Bruce Davison, which everybody knows from the X-Men. And I know him from Willard, always from Willard. I know him from The Lathe of Heaven. Look for The Lathe of Heaven, one of the best science fiction television produced. I believe it was BBC ever done about a guy whose dreams change reality. And he's the only one that when he wakes up knows things have changed. Everyone else in the world thinks it's the norm. It is so freakingly great. Um, and then I also had to get Ben. Ben, the two of us, we look no more. Michael Jackson made a hit song. I don't know why it became a hit. I really don't. I don't know. There's the inside of the discs with the little boy singing to Ben, who is the survivor of the movie Willard, the rat. Um, and I am so glad they finally brought both of these out. So glad I've been waiting years for a DVD release. And lo and behold, the Blu-rays come out. Um, this, this, this actually is probably my favorite South Park season in a long time. Um, I love South Park. I've got every single season on Blu-ray and every single season of, uh, well, of Blu-ray that has been released and all that early stuff I have on DVD. Uh, every once in a great while, I'll start at season one and watch them all back to back to back to back to back. And that takes a couple months. Um, but this, I, I, I don't buy them right away when they come out because, again, TV series are high. I wait for them to come down low or it's, it's, it's uh, financially uh, good. Not expensive. What's the other word? Not expensive. Uh, uh, Anyway, um, <laughs> the complete 19th series. I love this entire season. This is the first season where they made all 10 episodes one complete story. They, they followed the storyline and the characters, CP Principal, uh, or PC Principal, and, and the new uh, trying to bring up the town and make it better and... And then it gets into this weird conspiracy thing and science fiction. And, and this is one of the funniest seasons I've seen in a long time of South Park. Because everything before this was every episode was separate. And they, they did their own thing in each episode. And then the next week was totally different. But this is the first season where they carried the storyline all episodes. And I got it. And let me just open it. Why don't I just open it? Kind of show you guys. Uh, it's a, whoop, don't look at that. It's a, what do they call these, gatefolds? They list all the episodes. You got Matt and Trey doing a pseudo-commentary. This is an, a, uh, an ad to their new video game, which I cannot wait to play. Because the, the last video game was amazing, playing it. Um, so yeah, the complete 19 series of South Park. Um, this, I, I've been waiting I, I, ever since I first saw this. I heard about it. I heard it was really cool. A cool, funny movie. And it never came out. And it was released on Blu-ray in the UK. And so I went to Amazon UK and I put it in the 
basket, you know, the save for later. And I figured, okay, it's going to come out in the U.S. eventually. I mean, it's it's Patrick Wilson. It's going to come out eventually. He's a really well-known actor. It has yet. And this movie came out, I think, in 2012, maybe. And it has yet to come out in the U.S. Uh, not on Blu-ray, on DVD. And it's the movie called Stretch. And it is freaking hilarious. If you ever played GTA, I think it was Skin Slip. Go to Skin Slip's channel. I'll put it up there. I think he was the one that, that when I first saw this, uh, we were talking, and he's like, this is like a live-action GTA Five movie because it all takes place in L.A., and the look of it, the style of it, stealing cars, robbing people back, back and forth, it, it's very much like that. Patrick Wilson, who else is in this? Ed Helms, um, Jessica Alba. It's it's hilarious. There you go. Uh, if you if you haven't seen this, excuse me. If you haven't, damn drink making me belch. If you haven't seen Stretch and you just want a great time, like a laugh time, like a like a. Uh, uh, like a Seth Rogen Franco movie or something like that, uh, you know, watch Stretch. Stretch is hilarious. It really is. And again, nobody talks about it. I've yet to crack, well, I cracked it open, but I've yet to watch this ultimate edition of this film. I love this film. People either love it or hate it. But man, I love what Peter Jackson did uh, by making this thing an epic and when it came out, and the price was so freaking reasonable. I think it was only like nine bucks. Well, nine ninety nine, ten bucks. I, I, yeah, definitely buying it. I'm talking about Peter Jackson's King Kong. This is the ultimate edition, which is like the extended version of the thing. Uh, had to jump on it. I got the other version. I watch it pretty frequently, but I've yet to watch the full extended version. Um, which I want to do. I want to do. This is one. I'm. I got to do one of those. I got to do a defending where I talk about my 3D conversion wish list, where I go through every movie that I wish was in 3D, and I wish King Kong was remastered and put in 3D. This King Kong. I really wish it did. I think it would look great in 3D. Anyway, I have yet to watch it, but I love the movie. And I need to see the uh, Ultimate Edition. Ultimate? Ultimate. I had a lot of fun with this. This was a... Um, I like the first one. The second one is kind of a guilty pleasure, but it's not that good. It's, it, it's, it's kind of like the Fast and the Furious, where they get more outlandish and wilder and crazier, and they can't do that in reality because physics don't allow something like that. And this one, physics is thrown entirely out of the, the window. But it was 3D. I picked it up. And I had a great time with it. Triple uh, X, third one, Return of Xander Cage. Yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Uh, I thought the 3D was a whole lot of fun in it. Got it with the slip cover. Hide the digital copy. You got two discs in there. Nothing special. Um, yeah, it, like I said, the action scenes are amazing. The 3D is really, really good in it, but man, the, it's like you can't do that. You can't, you can't do that. That's not physically possible. Come on now. Uh, th this was just like a a 4.99. I, I, one day I was bored, and I was looking on Blu-ray.com, and you always go to where the sales are, and I. I put the thing to lowest prices, and I just go through, go through, go through. And I totally forgot I never had this in my in my collection, and I think I might have been waiting for the extended version, because there is an extended version of this, which I had on DVD. And I think I was kind of just waiting to buy it on Blu-ray, because I wanted the extended. And it still has yet to come out, the extended version of this movie. But it was like four bucks or three bucks or something. So I ended up, I was like, all right, I want it in my collection. I'm kind of in the mood to watch it again, and I did, and 
<laughs> it's a great ass movie. It's a great B movie of today. Con Air. Yeah, everybody loves Con Air. Nick Cage. Uh, you got John Cusack, John Malkovich. Not so cheap a week ago, but it's just the theatrical version. No release of the uh, of the 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 uh, uh, extended version. I was gifted this by um, ooh, it was Faligar, wasn't it? Faligar, look for Faligar up there. I think this was Faligar. I don't think this was Eric. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but Eric, you already got your link up there, so I'm going to say Sammy bought this for me. And... Oh, frack! Now I'm thinking it's... Rod Zombies, 31. Uh, I got this as a gift from somebody. Remember <laughs> who? I know I did an unboxing, so go back on my previous videos and you'll see who I got this from. Uh... Kind of like Rob Zombie. Uh, then I show the back and the front and hide the thing. And this is a cheapo eco. And since I did a review on this, I think it was an IMO review. Go back and watch that so you can see what I think of this film. Okay, okay. House of a Thousand Corpses is still my favorite, as is Devil's Rejects. Uh, this was okay. Go watch my review, and you'll see really uh, me get into this. But uh, out of Eric and Faligar, thanks whoever got this for me. Oh, I can't remember. It's in the, it's in the other video. Um, <laughs> Speaking of horror movies, um, Laserdisc, many a night. My buddy Perry would come over. We'd have uh, chicken sandwiches from Checkers, which were great. We, we would cook pizza. We'd order pizza. We'd get burritos. We'd get Taco Bell. We would, and we would drink so much, so much beer and shots of whiskey and, and vodka. And, and then we would eat later, like halfway through the movie. And this was what we watched lots of movies. We even did shrooms at one time. Watching Ferris Bueller on shrooms is amazing. Anyway, um, been years. Um, and this was one of the movies where it always seemed, what do you want to watch? I don't know. What do you want to watch? I don't want to watch it. Oh, no, no. This one would always pop up. And I'm so glad that um, they finally released this. Return of the Living Dead 3, uh, yeah, with Julie. I love Julie. I love that look that she becomes. Um, not much different on here. It's a cheap Oiko disc with one disc. Um, I got so many, so many memories watching this movie with my buddy. So many. We would talk through it. We would talk about it. We would do lines from it. It didn't hold. It's just... <laughs> we would talk about how bad some of the scenes are. How great some of the scenes are. And of course, we always watch the unrated version. And this has, I think, both versions. I think it has the theatrical and the unrated. And a crap load of extras. Which I have yet to go into. But... It's in my collection now, and one of these days I'm going to re... I re-watched it. I, I re-watched it when I first got it, but I, I, I want to look through the extras. I've yet to go through the extras. Two more left, folks. Two more left. Um, yeah, because those are DVDs, and I'm going to save those for the DVD defending. Uh, which one do I go through? What do you want to see? A 3D movie? Classic? Or a silent classic movie. I'm going to take a drink. You yell at the screen which one you want me to do first. The 3D one? Save the silent? Oh, the silent one you want to do first. I'm going to do the 3D one. 
Thank you, 3D Film Archive and Kino Lorber for releasing another fan frickin tastic job at remastering an old classic movie from the 50s in its original 3D presentation. Those redheads from Seattle. Uh, Western, as it were. Um, great, great old film. Never seen it. Never, ever seen this film. Got it because the 3D Film Archive released it. Gotta support. There's a ton of people out there supporting Scream Factory and Vinegar something and all those other companies out there. Uh, but me being such a great 3D fan, I purchase every single 3D Film Archive film that they've done. No disappointments here. Uh, in the, like I've said this in past videos. 50s, when they shot movies in 3D, they shot them in 3D. They composed the shots beautifully so things are in the foreground. Things There's super depth. Every once in a while, somebody points a gun or a rifle and it's coming out of the screen. Not gimmickly, because they still stay with the story of what they're doing, but warning, Will Robinson, danger, danger. Uh, but... <laughs> But it's just shot so well, it encapsulates the, is that the right word, Encap encapsulates the, the you being there on the set and, uh, or right there in the movie with you. Uh, I showed the back, I think. Uh, 3D Film Archives, Kino Lorber, comes with a fantastic, super thick, super thick book. And it's basically just them, wow, I have a lot, I have almost all of these, geez, of the movies they have. Um, and then, yeah, it smells like brand new printing. And then there's the disc. Those redheads from Seattle. Great music scenes, can-can dancers, legs going flying up into, the, <laughs> into your face, and all that other fun stuff. Uh, really great. Um... Uh, Rhonda Fleming, Jean Barry, Agnes Moorhead, a very young Agnes, yeah, the mother from Bewitched, um, Teresa Brewer, Guy Mitchell, and the Bell Sisters. If you're a 3D fan, pick up all the 3D film archive movies. Please, please, support them, support them. And there's Flickr Alley. Flickr Alley is like the new Kino. Um, I wasn't going to say the new. I think they also did Phantom of the Opera. I think they did, or was Kino that did Metropolis, Cabinet of Calvary. Um, did they do Cabinet? Oh, I, I don't remember. But anyway, I had this on my save for later list so long. I was waiting it for it to come, waiting it for it to come down in price because it was up in the 30s, the thir like 32 30, $34. It's like, come on down to 20 I'll buy it for 20 And it, for years, years, literally, like three or four or five years, it has never come down. And one day I was just feeling happy, and I, I caught up on all my bills and everything, and I was like, let's Let's not buy a bottle of alcohol this week. Let's just give that a break and pick up this classic film that I've been wanting to have in my collection for years. And it's been remastered and cleaned up to an extent, as best as it could be. And it's got tons of extra. Long Cheney's Hunchback of Notre Dame, the original. The makeup, Lon Chaney, man. Now, now I have now I. The only other one I, I probably would want to get is the Der Golem. Uh, I've have Cabinet, I have Metropolis, I have Phantom of the Opera. Now I have Hunchback. Although I wish they really would release on Blu-ray a box set of a lot of the Chaney films. 
um, uh, the 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 circus one, the one where he has no legs, the Unholy Three, uh, a lot of the other Cheney films. I really wish they would release. They're all on DVD, but I wish they would clean them up and put them on uh, Blu-ray. Here's where we open it. Uh, again, just like Kino Lorber comes with a fantastic booklet an actual program like they released in the theaters when this was at the theaters there's another little write-up um, of Carl LeMay who oh, I can't see if he's the director or writer or something but anyway um, yeah I finally gave in and I was like now it's in my collection. Hunchback of Notre Dame. Man, and Lon Chaney, man. For the little... There, there's a picture. There's a very famous picture, if you look online, of Lon Chaney without makeup, just standing there holding his makeup box. And it's, it's like that. It opens up, and it's tiny. It's just this... With grease paint and putty and brushes and stuff. And with that little box, he did so much to his face to change his physicality, to become the hunchback. Look at, look at that. Look at that. You've seen pictures. Just look for it. The, the Phantom of the Opera. All these different characters that, that he created for himself. Freaking amazing talent he was. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I'm just glad that they finally brought it out, and I got a copy, and, um, yeah, that's it. Hey, that's it. What is it? It's 9.20 now. I was talking since 8 o'clock, so it must be uh, an hour and 20 minutes that I've been talking, but I am caught up now. Everybody, I'm caught up with my crap load of pickups from last year and this year, on defending my collection and I hope you appreciate it I hope you enjoyed looking at what's new in my collection hopefully anything new that I get I will do shorter video videos of them of course and just here's two movies I got hey. you know and um, yeah yeah and uh, the 3d conversion wish list will be coming shortly as will my DVD collection, defending my collection videos, to show off all my DVDs that I still have. So, um, yeah, so we've got a long way to go yet. <laughs> Put it that way, because i got a crap load of DVDs. Um, yeah, so uh, anyway, I, 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 oh, I was going to say, I put out a thing that uh, I'm going to do my top ten favorite films of all time, which is it's almost impossible to do. And I was looking at that video, and I was like, wait, I don't have my favorite science fiction movie in there. I don't have favorite this movie. I don't have my favorite this movie in there. So it's going to be more than ten. More than ten top ten favorite movies. So what I thought about doing is instead of doing a single video, I'm going to do a bunch of little videos where I talk of my favorite movie of each genre that I can come up with. Sci-fi, drama, crime, uh, horror, uh, comedy, animated, family, adventure. There's more than 10 categories, genres. So I think I'm going to do a little, maybe five, 10 minute movie, a video on each one of my favorite movies of each one of those genres. And then the final video will be my top 10 favorite movies of all of those encompassing that um, those genres, 
I mean, my top ten might not have the best adventure movie in it. My top ten might not have my favorite comedy in it. You know, so so it'll be it'll be like that. I think I'm gonna do that because one, it's it's good. It's more stuff for the channel. You know, it, instead of just one video, it might be twenty videos. Um, but yeah, so. Um, that's what I'm planning on doing, so look forward to that in the future. And I think I'm done. I think that's it. Um, so, hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Thank you for watching. Uh, my Defending My Collection, a crap load of pickups, part three, the final. And uh, we'll see you in future videos. If you're interested, check out my game channel. Uh, Downstar Gameplay, where I play goofy mo goofy movies, goofy games, uh, not goofy, but scary. You get to see me scared, you get to see me drunk playing GTA, you get to see me do other stuff. And um, so there's that. And um, keep, keep your eye on the channel, uh, because you never know what's going to come up. I don't know what's going to come up. I might watch a movie and go, hey, I'm going to review it. And there we go. That's what Channel Downstar is all about. Potpourri. A potpourri of a cornucopper. <laughs> a potpourri cornucopia of whatever. It's just spilling out like you see at Christmas, the thing. What is that? Is that a, is that a gourd or something? And they all this stuff comes out. Blah! <laughs> so you're going to know what. You never know what's coming up next on Gentle Downstairs, though. But everybody, thanks for watching. And uh, keep watching. Uh, and we'll see you all in the next video. <laughs> Whatever that'll be. All right, everybody. Bye-bye.